If you only rent it out for those five weeks, your entire year's mortgage was covered at a 20% leverage. Hey, this is Danny Fry, the real estate advisor. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, do so now hit that subscribe button right there, right there. Turn on the post <laughs> notifications so that you can get updated as soon as the, this hot new content is coming out to you. I just got back from Panama City Beach, Florida, and it was amazing. I needed to be able to decompress and just disassociate completely from my grind. And what I found is that by doing that, I was able to really connect back with my family. I mean, not that we were disconnected or, or anything, but I, I was really able to uh, enrich my family relationships and spend some quality time with my kids and my wife, and it was awesome. But at the same time, I came back completely rejuvenated. How many times have you gone on vacation and you came back and you need a day off from your vacation before you go back to work? That didn't occur to me. I came back and was like, let's go. Totally rejuvenated and it was fantastic. But while I was down there, I learned a couple things. How many of you have thought about investing in vacation rentals? Comment down below and let me know what you think. What are your concerns with that? You know, I can tell you what mine are. Let's say about 10 years ago, my wife's uncle had a condo down in Panama City. When I realized how much we were paying for that condo for one week, I was blown away. So I started asking, how much did this thing cost, right? Because I think we paid at that time was $7,000 for one week on this three bedroom, two bathroom, oceanfront condo with this wrapper, beautiful wraparound on like the 12th floor, or I'm sorry, not the 19th floor of the Splash Resort in Panama City. It was amazing. But I was like, man, we paid $7,000 for a week there. $7,000 for one week. I said, how much did, did you buy this thing for? At that time, they were going, you know, this was probably like 2009. So it was just after the market started recovering from the 2008 market correction, right? They were going for about four fifty dollars for that three bedroom, two bath, oceanfront, $450,000. Literally, we did the math, about five weeks, five peak weeks weeks of the vacation time. If you only rent it out for those five weeks, your entire year's mortgage was covered at a 20% leverage. What I found is it could be potentially extremely lucrative. So people invest in vacation rentals for just a few reasons, right? One, to make cash flow. Two, a tax haven. So you have a, something that you can put into an asset that you can invest into that'll reduce your tax, uh, your tax burden. Then there's uh, people that just love that area and they wanna be able to go down there and stay for free. If you do that, you know, you rent it out and then the weeks that you don't wanna use it and then go down there the weeks that you do wanna use it, you know, in essence, you're staying for free. Somebody else is paying for your asset. You make a little bit of cash flow and you make a little bit of, you know, your assets improve, you know, equity buy down and all that kind of stuff. So my question is, what do you need to know about vacation rentals? Right? How do you need to protect your asset? How do you need to, you know, because every asset uh, is going to, every investment is going to have risk. So how do you mitigate the risk? What things should you be looking at mitigating the risk? Back to the vacation rental as a investment opportunity and a business strategy. There are a whole bunch of different ways. You can make money in real estate. You can invest in real estate in a thousand different ways. And we're going to cover all of those on this channel over the course of the next few years. What I want to talk about now is just vacation rentals. So vacation rental by owner, you can use property managers down there, you can vacation rental managers, but something else to consider is Airbnb. Airbnb is a disruptor, it's a game changer. And if you know what you're doing and prepare and plan and mitigate the expenses that get associated with Airbnb, like every week you gotta pay somebody to come clean the pro you know, to clean the property, things like that. So when, when you mitigate those risks, plan for those risks, plan for those expenses, you're gonna be good. You just have to remember, an investment is a business, okay? So you have to think about it like a business. Business is gonna have ups and downs. You're gonna have peak seasons and uh, off seasons. The economy is gonna affect it. So if the economy starts to decline, it goes into a recession, less people are gonna go on vacations. So you have to plan for all of those types of things. So let me give you a sneak glimpse at what I saw down in Panama City. Last year, there was a hurricane, you know, Hurricane Matthew came through and was just, just devastated Panama City. I hadn't realized that there would still be some rebuilding, construction, some devastation that's, you know, still being taken care of. With that kind of uh, natural disaster comes great opportunity. 
As we've been driving, we've been hitting a lot of videos showing you just hotels that are being you know, reconstructed, businesses, rooms. Anytime you have an investment, there's gonna be risk, right? Risk with the investment. You can mitigate the risk by planning for it, okay? So if you understand that you live in Florida and you're on the beach and Florida has hurricanes and you put in a, a fund, you know, just like you would for CapEx, to cover the expenses for you know a, a hurricane because it's gonna happen at some point in time. If you have that in your numbers, in your budget, and you put funds aside on a normal investment, you have capital expenses or CapEx. So with a vacation rental, you need to have a fund that you're putting in there just for those purposes, right? So you need to make sure, you know, maybe for this piece over here, this property over here, this rental house, this duplex, whatever it is, you have enough funds in the bank for about six months. There's six months of vacancy, it's covered. Or, you know, you also have funds set aside for the CapEx. Well, on a vacation rental, you have this, you know, instead of six months, maybe you want 12 months. You have CapEx expenses put away, but then you also need to understand what is my insurance expenses if a hurricane comes in and devastates my property. If that happens, you've already planned for it and you've mitigated the risk. It's going to happen. You know, it, even if it does happen, it tears your property up. Remember, it's a business. You've protected it. You've insured it. You've done all the steps necessary because you've planned for it. You've expected it and it's happened. And now you can recover from it and move on. So make sure you're taking advantage of planning for the worst case scenario in all of your businesses and all of your investment ventures because they're gonna get protected and will be profitable from here on out. Low risk. That's it for today, guys. Thank you so much for sticking around to the end of this video. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on your post notifications. That way you will be the first to know when new content is coming out. If you like the content that we're putting out in this video, absolutely comment below, like it, share it with your friends. Always, we welcome the feedback. So give us the feedback, let us know how we can improve the channel. Any topics that you wanna hear, or any kind of uh, markets that you want me to tie into, hit us up on the comments below. We'll put something together for you. This is the Real Estate Advisor signing off. All right guys, we'll see you next time.